Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to create this first person animation inside Animotive. So first thing we're going to do is just create an Animotive project. We're going to want to make this a pro project just so that we can export FBX and to Unity. So we'll open up the asset library here and I'm just pulling in two free assets. One's a character model that I got from Mixamo and the other is a pistol model that I got from Sketchfab. So both free assets, um, they're both a similar kind of realistic style. So all we're gonna do is pull those in and make sure they're all calibrated properly, make sure they're all configured. So here you can see I'm just making sure the eye position of our character is set up correctly. And then over to the pistol here, I'm just gonna map all those textures and materials because they didn't come embedded. And once we're happy with that, we can jump into the scene. Over in the scene here now, we're just gonna quickly spawn our character. We're gonna embody him and then we're gonna spawn our prop. We do have a video on this process in a bit more detail if that's something that you would be interested in. So I just spun on the pistol in here, um, testing the grip on that. Looks pretty good. Worth, I think, just having a quick run through of what the animation that you're creating, you want it to look like before you start recording. So that's what I've done here. Then we're gonna start recording and just firing out a quick reload animation here. Very simple. I think I'm quite happy with that one, so we'll disembody and we'll just quickly review from some different angles. So like front on here looks pretty good. And from behind here as well, quite happy with that. So I think we're ready to export, so we'll just open the export panel and export as an FBX. Quickly over to Unity then, so we can just pull in that FBX and before I get started on animating anything, I'm just doing a bit of project tidy up here. So I create a folder for animation, create a folder for the models, just so things are nicely organized. Just pulling in those same two models, so the character from Mixamo and the pistol from Sketchfab. And you can see there, I'm just extracting the textures because they're Im embedded in the character model, but for the pistol, I'll have to do some manual mapping for that which is all good. Let me see me doing that here in a second. All I've done there, yeah, is just extract the textures and then manually map them to a standard Unity material. Just turn the shininess down a bit, it's really shiny. <laughs> and that looks good, so I think I'm happy with that. We'll open up our models folder there and we're just gonna have a quick look at our exported animation before we start playing around with it within Unity. Um, so what I'm doing there is just clicking on the FBX and then dragging in the model from Mixamo so that we can see it. Uh, and as you can see there, it looks quite nice. Uh, there is a bit of uh, offset on the Y and root motion going on, but we can tidy all that up once we get into the actual guts of the animation. So before we start, I'm just gonna quickly set up the camera here. So just make the FOV a bit bigger, make the background like a bright green so that we can see what we're doing. Um, and then because our exported model is a full body mesh, I'm just using this tool called FPS Mesh Tool, which it's really great, it just basically lets you slice up your meshes within Unity so you don't need to take them into something like Blender or Maya to do it. You could also do that if you wanted to, but this tool just makes it really easy. So all I'm doing here is I'm gonna pull in our Mixamo character and then you'll not be able to see it on screen, but I'm opening the dialog window for FPS mesh tool and just basically <laughs> cutting off his arms so that they're the only things that are gonna be rendered. Uh, it comes with this really nice little editor that lets you see the weights and stuff of, of the arms and legs and the head. Um, and it also comes with invisible materials, so you'll see me applying those here now, uh, which is really nice. Basically just means that everything gets occluded uh, from the camera. So now that we've done that, we're just gonna duplicate our take from inside the FBX. The only reason we're doing that is because whenever you import like an embedded animation like that within Unity, 
um, it's a read-only, so I'm just duplicating it there and renaming it to something that we can understand just to allow us to edit it within Unity's animator. Uh, and I'm just dragging that animation file right onto the character, which will create an animator for us, which is really handy. And then inside the animation window here, I'm just checking things out. So like I said before, we do want to get rid of that root motion on the character. So that just means deleting the position and rotation um, adjustments that are already on there. And then I'm just repositioning the asset here so that it's in the view of the camera as well. So depending on the style of, of your game, I mean, this is obviously completely customizable. You might want to have a shorter FOV or a longer FOV. You might want to show more of the arms. It's completely up to you. Um, what I am doing here is just skimming through the animation quickly and making sure that it, it looks nice from this point of view. And also, I'm just basically copying the first frame of animation and pasting it at the very end of the clip. Uh, and just tidying up that because then we can loop it a lot nicer um, than if it was just like a hard cut at the end. So I think we're ready to pull the pistol in. So I've just dragged that model as a child of the right hand, which will be handy because now whenever the right hand moves, the pistol will obviously move with it. And again, just a bit of a process here of making sure everything is lined up and fitting nicely. We are going to do some finer adjustments on the right hand fingers. Um, so this doesn't have to be completely accurate, but I think it's nice to just get a good kind of line of sight. So that it doesn't look a bit strange whenever you're holding it in first person. So you can see I'm just testing that here. And you can see a bit of the left arm is clipping at the bottom there. So I think I do go and adjust the whole the whole mesh here, yep. Pull it back a little bit. Uh, the pistol is quite centered on, so yeah, I just moved it to the right a little bit there and just panning through now and making sure it all looks okay. Some more finer rotations. I think it helps to kind of move to the middle of the clip whenever more of his hand is showing, because um, it gives you a better idea of how, you, how the pistol should be rotated and things like that. I think the key to any sort of like first person animation is just small adjustments uh, and you'll see that with the fingers here. I think it's really important to just do small rotations on each bone as opposed to like a massive rotation on a top bone because uh, it just looks a bit more natural that way. Um, so I'm not super happy with the rotation of the fingers that were exported from Animotive so what I'm doing here is just deleting uh, any of the rotation data that's on these four fingers first. So I'm quite happy with the thumb. I don't think I need to change that, but for the index and the middle and the pinky and the ring, I'm just deleting the rotation data on there and then remaking my own, as you can see here. So again, that's a bit of a process of just going through each finger and doing little tweaks on them to kind of wrap nicely around the handle of the pistol. But I think that's looks looking pretty good. And like I said, it's, it's better to do little rotations on each bone as opposed to like massive ones on just one bone. And you can see here, I'm just animating the slide and the magazine coming out of the pistol as well. Again, that's completely customizable and it will change depending on the type of game that you're making. And obviously this is just like a quick, a quick uh, run through of, of the process. You could definitely make this a lot nicer than I have here. And I'm quite happy with that. We'll just do some final checks and we can maximize and see what it's like. So I think this is a good process in showing how you could knock out a very quick animation in less than an hour. And you can even slap it on a character controller like I've done here and use it in your games quite easily. Um, so yeah, that is how you make a quick first person animation within Automotive. Thank you very much.